Welcome to SDH's coverage of everything going on in USL Championship. We'll let you know what's going on in the week that was. Interesting trade that happened. We'll go into the details of that going forward and get you ready for the week that will be when it comes to all of the competition. Remember, Open Cup also a part of the week as well uh, as we go here in the midweek for the teams in USL Championship that remain. Let's go back over the last seven days, starting off Wednesday the 17th. New Mexico United on the road at Segra, beating Loud United by the score of 3-1. Championship Soccer Stadium, Orange County knocking off Sacramento Republic by the score of 1-0. Friday night, and this will be your match of the week, it is uh, at One Oak Field, FC Tulsa hosting Memphis 901. Here's your highlights, courtesy of our friends at the USL Championship, ESPN Plus, and YouTube. Off there with Laurent Kishidu. And away we go in this USL Championship match. The only one being played tonight. Wayne Perry's come away with the ball there. Now here's De Costa. Epps is running wide down the left-hand side. Milo Yosef, though, receives the ball now, bearing down on goal. Good ball into the box. Great save for Mead. And there's Moses Dyer, who got a first shot and then a header towards goal. And credit the goalkeeper. Play, but Yosef gets wide, but the initial run from Dyer going across pulls the defenders away, allowing Yosef to have a clean look for a cross, and then Dyer continues his run, gets the initial touch, but great defending, the recovery, Hamid, and then the clearance away. And up. Malloy, Goodrum, good one too. Malloy now, round one. Malloy with a shot, it's the bar. Is Reese Buckmaster good ball into the box? Tate will flick it away, and Eric Burb will keep it in. Aaron will know. You realise when it hits the the woodwork, we'll see it here. It doesn't count in the stats as a shot on goal, to my astonishment. Um, but he was very unlucky there because I think Nelson, to be fair, was beaten by that that shot. Is Rucci, Luis Fernando, striding down. He wants a fifth to his name this season. Good ball into the box. Kitea do shot deflected off the bar and put into the back of the net. And Memphis 9-1 have the lead. And it is Pickering who gets the goal. His second goal of the season breaks the deadlock. 54 minutes gone. It's FC Tulsa nil. Memphis 9-1 FC 1. At the away side, great piece of skill. Fernando playing a dangerous ball in. Trying to find that perfect pass gets a bit of help. Here's De Costa with the space now for Marcus Epps. Epps towards goal, and Hamid got a hand out, and then Milo Yosef kicks it out for a goal kick. Good. De Costa with a good piece of footwork there to release that ball to Epps. Again, you had runners in the box. Yes, you do. Pickering trying to open it up. Here's Malloy, could hit one, still could hit one. And Malloy threw a load of players and into the goal. And the Irishman gets the second goal through a crowd of players. 65 minutes gone. FC Tulsa nil. Memphis 901 FC 2. A bit of a deflection to throw off Nelson, but it's just Nelson. enough for Memphis 901 FC to find their second goal here of this second half, making it that much harder for FC Tulsa to get back into this game. Yeah, it came off the heel of Bradley Bouchois. Aaron Malloy won't care, it's his first of the season for the captain. I mean, with a lot of space to run into, he has his defense organized. Costa then with the responsibility. Flips it over the top of the wall, and in comes Epps, and a tap in for Darius Suarez. It is a goal, it is a fight back from FC Tulsa. With eight minutes left, Dario Suarez, the substitute, scores the goal. It's game on. It's FC Tulsa 1, Memphis 901 FC 2. The substitute in the second half is the difference maker. Excellent delivery from Da Costa. And F feel they've got to get it forward as quickly as possible. Stolen away here by Turchi. And the referee brings this game to an end. And Memphis 901 FC have won this game by two goals to one. They go. So we'll get into the dynamics of the 2-1 win and the after effects of it coming up in just a little bit involving, frankly, these two teams. And there's a bit of irony that's attached. Also, Saturday, the very busy day 
that we had in USL Championship. You've got Charleston Battery early at Patriots Point knocking off Monterey Bay by the score of 1-0. 2-0 win for Hartford Athletic at Trinity Health over Loudoun United, who had to do the quick turn from the midweek. Indy 11, 1-0 win over Colorado Springs at the Mike. Pittsburgh puts four on Vegas Lights, winning 4-1 at Highmark. Shootout five-goal thriller San Diego Loyal over the Miami FC by the score of 3-2 at Ricardo Silva. El Paso Locomotive visiting Protective, beating Birmingham Legion by the score of 2-1. Big win for Detroit City at Keyworth Stadium, knocking off the defending champ San Antonio FC on the road. Final score 1-0 in Hamtramck, Michigan. At HEB Park, Tampa Bay puts three on RGV, winning 3-0. Phoenix Rising in Irvine, California, beats Orange County by the score of 1-0. And our Western match of the week comes from Hard Health Park. Sacramento Republic hosting Oakland Roots. Here's your highlights, courtesy of our friends, USL Championship, ESPN Plus, and YouTube. And they'll head to the south end of the field to a slight breeze. An epic evening in Sacramento, 75 degrees. There's a whistle from Elton Garcia, and here we go from Heart Health Park. He's flying, as is Herrera. Herrera running into some space, trying to get around Barbier. It's in for Kecko, and Barbier is just able to escape there. But Sacramento not done yet. Kerr over the top, looking for Kecko. Is he onside? He is. Inside the bar, Kecko with a left-footed strike. Oh, it's brilliant from number seven, number two on the year. And the Republic have their first goal in the 12th minute. And just manages to put it right in off that far post. And we spoke about how good Blanchett is. There's no chance he's saving that. You thought the opportunity had gone for the Republic. Jack Gurr keeps it alive. Recycles his Ron Keiko, and what a finish that is. Mark Briggs talked about how he wanted more goals. From Demacus playing this ball forward for Rito. Rito takes a shot, denied by Danny Vidiello on the line. Kekko into space. It's a foot race with Matsoso. Cicerone cutting in between. Look at the left side here. Has room. Numbers. Republic. 4-3. Moving for Cicerone. Cicerone's going to take it himself. Oh, yes. Russell Cicerone surveyed the field. Looked for a teammate. Went for it himself. And it's number eight on the year. Eight of the season. And this all happens. Kekko initially putting the pressure on. But it's the support Cicerone has. He has runners off of him. The defenders step off. They don't know what to do. And blasts it right in the top corner. No yeah. chance, Blanchett. Everyone was worried about the other man, and they didn't pick up number 11, and he just puts a knuckler in the back of the net. Tower Bridge Battalion. He was the man who scored in the only Republic victory against the Ritz. It was Connor Donovan. Herrera, is he onside? Flag stays down. Herrera! Sebastian Herrera, number two on the year, but it's number three tonight, and Sacramento Republic have their biggest advantage against the Roots all time. So, I mean, he's rolled the defender, and Hackshaw just cannot recover. Cool. Calm, collected, slots it in, 3 0. Broke three lines to get there, and Sebastian Herrera, a tireless workhorse, continues to. Cross comes in, it's cleared by Sacramento. Opportunity in Oakland! Has gotten one back here, a service from the right side, and Sacramento caught a bit sleeping there, and it's three to one. Oakland Roots find themselves back in the game. It was Memo Diaz crossing it in, and at the back post, just unmarked. It was Barbier with a left foot, slots it past Danny Vitiello, and the game's back on. Once again, that, that comes towards the end of this game that you have to stay strong. In the box, cross back post, Rodriguez saved by Fidiello. Oakland saying it's in the, the back of the net. Crowd stomping their feet, supporter section up. The whistle to Elton Garcia's mouth, and that is it.
Sacramento takes one of two in the USL Championship rivalry matchup with the Oakland Roots. So that sets up your standings after the week, and there's action in the midweek, so we've got to kind of do this on the hop. Eastern Conference standings, Charleston four points clear of Tampa Bay, Lou City, and Pittsburgh. Right now, Tampa Bay and Lou City each have five wins. Tampa Bay better on goal difference. Pittsburgh has four wins in 11 matches. They have 17 points. Legion are fifth at 16. Memphis 901 at 15, unbeaten in five, unbeaten in seven. Indy 11 at 12 points. The Miami FC 11 points. That's north of the playoff bar in the east. Below the playoff bar, Loud United, who've lost five in a row after a good start. They're at 10 points. FC Tulsa's at nine. Hartford Athletic and Detroit City have each won twice this year. Hartford Athletic has a better per point average, uh, games per, points per game average, eight points in 10. Detroit City, eight points in 11. In the West, Sacramento Republic at 24 points. El Paso at 22. They've run the table in their last five. San Diego Loyal at 20 points. San Antonio FC at 19. Colorado Springs has lost three in a row. They're at 16 points ahead of Phoenix Rising on wins. Oakland Roots is at seventh at 14 points. They're ahead of New Mexico United on wins. Monterey Bay is below the playoff bar at 13 points. RGV's at 11. Orange County's at 9. Vegas Lights have still yet to win this season through their first 10. They are 0, 4, and 6. Taking a peek at the schedule and the news. Schedule we'll get into here coming up with the activity. We do have some midweek, and we also remember have Open Cup, so keep an eye on that. Wednesday, the 24th, Loose City hosting FC Tulsa at Lynn Family. Friday night football, it is at Trinity Health in Hartford. Sacramento Republic travels from one end of the world to the other to take them on at 7.30 in the evening. 10.30 in the corner of 38th and Washington, Phoenix Rising hosting at Las Vegas Lights. Big Saturday, traditionally as always. 4 o'clock at Kenworth, at Keyworth, it is at Detroit City and Birmingham Legion. 7 o'clock at the Mike, Indy 11 hosting Loose City on a quick turn from the midweek. 7 o'clock at Ricardo Silva, the Miami FC hosting Orange County. 7.30 at Al Lang, Tampa Bay hosting Switchbacks. 8 o'clock at HEB, RGV hosting Charleston Battery. 8.30 in San Antonio at Toyota Field, New Mexico United visiting. 10 o'clock at Pioneer, Oakland Roots hosting San Diego Loyal. And on Sunday, it is Loud United hosting Pittsburgh Riverhounds at Segre at 6 o'clock. Wednesday the 31st at Cardinal, Monterey Bay hosting FC Tulsa. Now, the news is interesting. FC Tulsa acquires Philip Goodrum via a transfer from Memphis, and involved in the deal is Rodrigo da Costa. So, Philip Goodrum, who wasn't happy in Memphis with Memphis 901, has now been shipped to Tulsa. Rodrigo works his way over. So, after the 2-1 win by Memphis, Philip Goodrum is traded to the team that lost, and Rodrigo is traded to the team that won. So we'll keep an eye on that and see what happens as uh, as everyone in Memphis with Memphis 901 gets adjusted to how uh, Stephen Glass wanted to operate, and they are unbeaten in their last seven, as a matter of fact. So we'll keep an eye on Memphis 901. Power rankings for Week 11, and uh, we'll see how it appears. El Paso up three spots to number one. Lou City stays at number two, which means Sacramento Republic drops to number three. Tampa Bay up one. Memphis 901 up one, which means San Antonio FC down to six. Charleston stays at seven. Pittsburgh, Loyal, Phoenix Rising, New Mexico United all up two spaces, which means Oakland Roots are down four to 12. Indy 11 at three, four, and three up eight to 13, which meant the switchbacks of part of that drop five spots to 14. Legion stay at 15. Monterey Bay down 2 to 16. Hartford Athletic up 5 to 17. RGV stays at 18. Detroit City up 5 to 19. Orange County up 3 to 13, which means Miami's down 4 to 21. Tulsa's down 2 to 22. Loudon down 7 to 23. Vegas Lights staying uh, down 5 spots to number 24. And so they still look for that first win at 04. And six on the season. Goal of the week nominees for week 11. Once again, reminder, you can vote till Thursday, May 25th at noon. Keep an eye out on all of the USL Championship uh, platforms, social, web, or otherwise. USLChampionship.com is a part of it in the USL app. You can vote on uh, Save of the Week through Friday. That has yet to be posted as of Monday afternoon. So, championship choice for goal of the week. Chris Weehan, New Mexico United. Brian Rebillon from Indy 11, Skage Siemensen from Detroit City, and Kiko 
from Sacramento Republic in the game against Oakland. So Weehan, Rebellion, Simonson, and Kiko for your goal of the week for week 11. Vote through Thursday at noon Eastern time, and you can uh, have your say as to what you thought the goal of the week was for the USL Championship. Once again, remember, save of the week, not up yet. Presented by our friends at Select, and that will go from Tuesday to Friday at noon Eastern time. You can vote through all the social media platforms for the USL Championship and the USL app. So you've got uh, that to look at. Don't forget always to go through the uh, social media platforms to keep an eye on things. Follow along on Twitter, on Facebook, and on Instagram for USL Championship. And let's uh, get you into the schedule. And it's going to be crazy as always. Once again, matches of the week. You kind of look and see what's going on. And off the top, you look at Indy 11, who's hot. Lou City is hot. Charleston Battery, what can they do on the road? San Diego Loyal and Oakland, that one's going to be a tough one as well. And then you're going to have to deal with the quick turn with uh, some teams having to play. And Wednesday, May 31st, to wrap up the month at Cardinal to start things off for the month of June. So Tampa Bay's been hot recently. They host switchbacks. You've got a lot to look at when it comes to uh, USL Championship, all the news, the notes, the standings, and everything going on in the league. So for everybody here at SDH, if you are in market and can catch the action in USL Championship, please do. Great quality of uh, competition, as always, in USL Championship in the East and the West. If you are in market and can't, follow along in your local providers. If you're out of market and still want to, what you can do is you can go to ESPN Plus and watch all of the games in USL Championship all season long. We'll be back at it again next week to get you through the end of May and into the first weekend of June with everything going on past Memorial Day. Just uh, for everybody here at SDH, reminder, play it safe, everybody. Enjoy the action. USL Championship, we'll catch up with you next week.